Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Burning Dogface, and I'm delighted to welcome you to Let's Play Quantum Break. This game came out in 2016, and it's a third-person shooter with a theme of time manipulation. It was developed by Remedy Entertainment, who also made Max Payne 1 and 2, but not 3, and both Alan Wake and Alan Wake's American Nightmare. I can't speak for the Max Payne experience... yet. But I can tell you that I really enjoyed both Alan Wake games. There was some superb writing in there. So I've been eagerly anticipating a chance to get back into Remedy's world. Before we begin, I'd like to give a very special shout-out to Uninvited Haggis, who gifted me this game out of the blue. I've actually had my eye on this one for a very long time, so, uh, believe me when I say that this really means a lot to me, so thank you, Haggis. I hope you enjoy this series, because it's dedicated to you. I'd also like to mention that this is going to be a blind LP. I did step into the very first area in order to get a reading on the frame rate and audio levels, but other than that, everything we're about to see is going to be new to me. I'm going to play the game for the first time ever, and you guys get to come along for the ride. Now, without further ado, let's play Quantum Break. Uh, yeah, nothing entertaining here in the uh, descriptions. Let's just stick it on normal and get going. Yes, indeed, I am okay with that. The number one killer is time. It destroys us all. This is what you need to know. Time broke. A growing fracture leading to the end of time. We went after a device that could fix it. Things turned ugly. Paul Stream was there to stop us. He has superpowers. Jack. Him and me both. We failed. Jack. And of course, time travel was involved. Jack. Going too fast for you? Okay. What do you want to cover first? You tell me. Let's start at the beginning. When you first arrived at Riverport University. I came back home to see my best friend, Paul Serene. He wanted to show me what he'd been working on. My brother, Will, was a scientist. He was also involved. Paul said it was world-changing. He was right. Whoa! Come on! Watch where you're going, man! Fuck off! Get out of the road! Riverport University. Here we are. Hey, thanks for the ride. No problem. You'd been away for six years. Paul and I had kept in touch, but, well, not so much. How did it make you feel? I was just happy to see Paul. Oop. I'll hitch up there. So, going into this, I know very little about this game. I know it's a third-person shooter. I know you get some kind of time powers. They said as much in the opening cutscene. And, uh... I know it uses the likenesses and the voices of, uh... 
a few I guess high. I should go find Paul. Well, high-profile actors. Uh, Jack here is uh, modeled after and voiced by Sean Ashmore, who uh, is probably best known as Bobby Iceman Drake from the X-Men movies. And I hadn't been expecting him to show up so quickly, but uh, if we just walk over here... I doubt he's out here. We better head into the campus. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, this gentleman here is modeled after and uh, voiced by Lance Reddick, who uh, I know best as uh, Agent Philip Broyles from the TV show Fringe, but apparently he's better known for uh, The Wire, which I'm afraid I never saw. <clears throat> never saw. What do we got here? Lucky Joe's Treasure Trove. Oh yeah, the whole opening area seems to be dedicated to this protest, Stop Monarch Solutions. I like that, Stop Monarch Problems. Can I just fuck off from the plot and go in here? I didn't try that. No. In uh, Alan Wake, all you needed to do to save the game was walk under one of these, but I have a feeling it won't be that easy here. Or, sorry, I was actually thinking of the health regeneration thing when I said that. Saving the game should be pretty easy, as a general rule. Oh. Dude's gone. That's too bad. If you walk back up to him, he uh, gets a little rude with you. Ah, uh, what the hell. Sorry about that. Let's see how long this takes, anyway. It's good knowledge. Oh, yes, and the other thing I know is that, of course, this is the game with uh, the somewhat infamous 20-minute cutscenes. Good morning. Yeah. Got to stand here as you get rude? Whatever you want. I don't have the time. I guess I should go find Paul. He said out loud. Like a crazy person. <laughs> Rough night, huh? Oh, uh, it's for... Um, I, it's just whatever doesn't even matter anymore. I'm... Um, yeah. I doubt he's out here. Better head into the campus. Holy shit, this guy is wasted. He's gonna wake up in a ditch. I'm calling. Riverport University. Hmm. Paul told me to meet him at the physics building. Why is the mouse in the center of the screen? Go away. Riverport hexes. Seems like a really nerdy game. Locate narrative objects to immerse yourself deeper in Quantum Break's story. You can review previously collected narrative objects inside the game's timeline menu. Uh... Oh! Stop that. Exciting. Notice that's a 6% of the collectibles in this level. Well, I guess the tutorial level is never going to be very long. Just the way he swings his arms when he moves really reminds me of uh, Alan Wake. No. Oh. Jack. 
I just got to the campus. Where are you? God, it's good to hear your voice. Uh, when you hit the courtyard, look right, you'll see this fancy modern physics building with the lights on. I'll meet you inside right. there. I am so looking forward to this, man. You still haven't told me what this is. I know. See you soon. Why 4 a.m.? Why not wait till morning? Paul had always been a showman. Protest flyer. Hey you! Take action now! Monarch Solutions wants to tear down the pride of Riverport University, the beautiful and historic library building generations have studied in. This is a part of our heritage, but they don't care. Are you going to put up with that? Of course you aren't! Are you going to take action? Of course you are! First of all, go online, use hashtag save the library, and get loud. The only way they'll stop is if they look bad enough doing it. Well, they missed the is. Hmm. Uh, second, secondly, join our protest at the university on October 8th. Let's show them uh, there are still people left in Riverport who give a crap. I wonder if Save the Library was part of, like, a... What do they call it? Uh, you know, a, a viral marketing thing. Huh? <laughs> That's vaguely ominous. When I was first looking into this game, I thought that, uh... Sean Ashmore was... Well, quote, the guy from Killjoys. But no, that is actually Sean Ashmore's twin brother, Aaron Ashmore. Hmm. Some protest. So he's going to wake up in the morning under a tree, and uh, his phone will be dead. Or, you know, stolen. Oh. Wandering off the path. Hello. Oh. Hey, do you know where the physics building is? You mean the big-ass metallic turtle behind me? Hard to miss, man. Thanks. Hey, can we go home yet? Stop Monarch Problems. For years, Monarch Solutions has been bully uh, buying out Riverport businesses piece by piece, steamrolling over small businesses and local culture to establish corporate dominance. On October 9th, they intend to demolish the historic Riverport University Library to make way for additional Monarch-funded university research centers. They've gone too far. Sick of Monarch Solutions, turning our city into a corporate monopoly? So are we. It's time to stop trading culture for profits. It's time to stop Monarch. On October 8th, at 7pm, help us spread awareness of Monarch's shameful actions by joining our protest in the Central Courtyard. Camp out and enjoy the all-night music. Tell your friends. For more information, contact Amy Ferrero. A. Ferrero at RiverportUniversity.com Note, this is a non-alcoholic event. That doesn't seem to have worked very well. What if I wanted to go into Wider Hall? Sorry about that. I'll just uh, get back to it. Can I run. There it, oh, and zoom in to the left trigger. Switch the shoulders. Shiny, but well, come on. Who gives a shit? I love that old library, even if it is kind of falling apart. 
apart. I like things with character. And Monarch's belt. <laughs> They've got all the character of a brand new smartphone. Sure, call me a hipster, whatever. I just think you don't have to be a smug douchebag with organic sneakers and an ironic NASCAR cap to prefer a nice corner restaurant with personality to yet another Olive Garden, you know? Still, much as it pains me to say this, I think this is a done deal. Monarch's gonna take that library down tomorrow no matter what we say. Might as well pack it up and go home and get ready for the next fight. Cause you know, they aren't done with our town yet, right? Interesting and unfortunate that it doesn't so Amy, call it a night. There's nobody left to convince. That it doesn't uh, subtitle the radio. The protests seem like a lost cause. Maybe sympathize with the students. Expose the lies, you uh, tell the truth. Wow, some people are in this for the long haul. Fraternity, you've done enough damage. We're being shut down. <laughs> hey, I come in peace. I'm just meeting a friend nearby. At 4 a.m.? Yeah, tell me about it. Well, we're spreading awareness about Monarch Solutions, so if you want to know how badly they're giving us the shaft, then you could just ask me. That was interesting. The frame rate dropped a, th a solid 30 when uh, it went to the in engine cutscene. All right, what's going on here? Okay. How would you feel if you knew a corporate monopoly was taking a massive dump all over your personal history? Uh, that's quite an opener. Yeah, Good. Decide. Because that beautiful library over there is over a hundred years old. It's part of the city's heritage. And Monarch Solutions plans to tear it down tomorrow. Do you want to know why? We've got a chart with all the details. Oh. Play along. Go ahead, check out the chart. Monarch problems, selling out river Monarch's ports since 1999. Build another research facility. And for what? I bet you're gonna tell me. Hmm, to push their corporate agenda. I mean, look at those numbers. They're slowly taking over the city, and everybody's completely blind to it. Uh, it doesn't look good. Hey, I gotta meet my friend, but you keep fighting this, okay? All right. Enjoy your booty call. <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, 1999 bought out all major tech and security companies in Riverport using earnings from shady investments. 2000 evaded questioning regarded who was, regarding who was truly running Monarch. 2001 bought out major media outlets. Questions stopped being asked. 2006 bought Gull Island. Tore down war monuments to construct R&D facilities. 2008 demolished Riverport's central train station to build Monarch Tower. That does seem like a dick move. Uh, to, to, 2010. Purchased entire industrial district and dry docks, putting thousands of people out of work. 2016. Aimed to demolish Riverport University Historical Library to replace it with yet another research facility. What is Monarch's agenda? Nobody knows. Who runs the company? Nobody knows. When do we want answers? Now! Wow, that does seem uh, kind of ridiculous. Nice usage of We Are the 99%. This makes that very 2016. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. <laughs> He's been gone for five years. Dark matter and dark energy constitute over 95% of our universe. We're just a speck of light floating in an endless ocean of darkness. The light of the flag. 
flash of his smiles and wicked sweat as he lies in the blood of his face, eyes staring. The one we wear for all to see, and the face that lies beneath in the dark. Holy shit! Those brilliant sons of bitches. Microsoft didn't want to do uh, sequels to Alan Wake... Because it wasn't profitable enough. Uh, Alan Wake's American Nightmare was like a short, downloadable game that, from the sounds of things, was sort of uh, Remedy's way of admitting that a full-sized Alan Wake 2 just wasn't going to happen uh, with the present circumstances. But they're continuing the story as the TV show in this game. They always put a TV show in their games, or a radio show, or something. Like, in Alan Wake, you could find uh, episodes of Night Springs, the Twilight Zone knockoff that Alan used to write for. So, it's a TV show about Alan being hunted by the FBI. Oh, because of the fucking murders committed by Mr. Scratch. But, okay, okay, uh, the Alex Casey, the, the dude there. That was, uh, the actual guy there was Sam Lake, one of the Remedy developers. He was famously the uh, physical model for uh, Max Payne in the very first game. Uh, you know, with a with silly, constipated expression. Um... But Alex Casey is the name of... The I, I remember this. I was actually thinking about this the other day. Uh, Alex Casey is the name of the protagonist of, Ale of uh, Alan's old novels. Like he had, he had a series of crime novels, and then he unexpectedly and controversially killed the guy off in the last book because he was tired of uh, crime drama and wanted to try something new. Paul had always been hungry for success. Driven. He made it onto a lot of those top young professionals lists. Now he was coordinating some huge project at the university. It's a big deal for him. But now they have, uh... Yeah, yeah, the, the whole Alex Casey thing was meant to be a metaphor for Remedy not working on Max Payne anymore. Like, you could find uh, the last... when There was a flashback to Alan's apartment, and you could find the last page of the last Alex Casey novel. And it's like he's bleeding out in a ditch, thinking about his dead wife and daughter and how he'll soon be with them. And, uh... It was read out by the voice actor who played Max Payne. So the whole, so that whole thing was basically Remedy letting go of Max Payne's story and saying, you know, that's over, we're done with that. But, uh, this TV show appears to be Alex Casey as an FBI agent hunting Alan Wake... That's some kind of mysterious serial killer. So, is that just a TV show in, in like, the Quantum Break universe? Is this, like, uh, based on something that actually happened? And did anyone else watching this video feel a huge shiver down, you know, their, their spines when it opened up with, It's not a lake, it's an ocean. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's the first episode and I'm fanboying out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, protest's over. At home. Not why I'm here, Chief. Holster that safety whistle. Prick. There was an unfortunate error just as a new part of the conversation happened, and it ate a line where Jack asked, Where's your uniform? Excuse me. Come on. I've been in shit enough to smell at security. 
You sure this is somewhere that you want to be sniffing around? Was that supposed to be a threat? Because that's adorable. Just walk away. Liam Burke, a Monarch security officer. Our first meeting was cordial compared to him introducing a rifle butt to my head later on. Well, that's an interesting way of doing that. You know, the timer did go just after... Well, while I was rambling about, uh... Alan Wake. So, uh... I'll tell you what, this is actually a pretty good time to do this. I know not a lot happened in this episode, you know, just setting up the world, but, uh... I'm gonna sneeze. Sorry. Uh, I know not a lot happened in this episode, uh, except for world building, but uh, let's call it there and get into the, uh, the actual events uh, next time. I think this has gone alright for the premiere. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you next time on Let's Play Quantum Break, when we head into the Mayor Physics Research Center and meet up with our good friend Paul Serene, who totally weren't, won't turn into a super-powered villain later on. Uh, later.